G'day guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now today we are back for maybe the fourth or fifth AFL season predictions video. Boys, how are we feeling? Yeah, because every year I get excited and I reckon I've nailed it. And without Pal each year, I just get drastically wrong. I'm always confident. Well, I did wanted to bring up, you tipped Geelong on top. Yep. Did you tip them for the flag as well? No, I did, but I did on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> They didn't win it, well, I did. <laughs> oh, I, had, I had a back four. What confident. year did you tip the Magpies to win the wooden spoon? Might have been last. Last? I think it was me and Dutch. I think we tipped them for the wooden spoon last year. <laughs> Maybe Dutch did not win. I'm trying to share some of the blood. <laughs> I'm broken oh, oh. him in. And we've got our uh, Dosso's Demons Ruckman, Liam Van Gems. Dutch, how are you feeling for this season? Uh, I'm alright, thanks for having me. My nerves are probably coming from uh, a bit of a lack of knowledge as I <laughs> scrounged up some picks. You sort of just riding them down on a napkin before. Uh, yeah. I think I'll be right. All right, let's get into it then. Tipping the top four and the flag in the same mm. category. Who wants to go first? I'll kick this off. Yeah. As much as it's hurt me to say, I think uh, Richmond finished top. Wow. Yeah, take the MCG home ground of Angie this year. Yeah. Geelong finished in second. Bloods, Sydney third. And uh, I reckon Dutchies Bob Brisbane will finish fourth. Ooh. Just taking four three. Where's the D's? D's are not in it. <laughs> the D's aren't in it. I just don't reckon that. And this could come at the bottom. Can't believe I, that. I, I may be proved wrong, but I reckon come, come in the end of the year. Who are you going for the flag then, Richmond? Nah. <laughs> 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 no, I, I, Back to backs. I'll, I'll put the Moz in here. I know it's hard, but I, I, I think we're in a spot where we can we can go back to back. I feel like I say this every year, but I reckon the Cats are going to fall off a cliff. Hallelujah. At the top of my tray, I have the Melbourne Demons. Oh, so they bounce back. They're back. <laughs> they're winning their second flag. It's sort of the dynasty starting to build. <laughs> if you win three in sort of four or five years, that's a dynasty. I reckon this is the next oh, piece of the puzzle. You're guilty. Second, Dutchies Lions. I reckon now they finally break through and they probably make a big dance. They've been in the top yeah. four for long enough. Fagan deserves one. The boys are ready. Tigers in third and in fourth. <laughs> no, no. You better believe it. The blue bag, <laughs> it's time! <laughs> Woo! All our teams have made it then. Yeah, I know. Yeah, good. Everything's coming up the predictions. <laughs> so my top four, I've got the Lions up the top. I think they've been my first on, on the ladder the last few predictions, but this is the year. Yep. This is the year they, they really step up. I think the tie, I assume they get an easy, easier fixture. I reckon they're going to pinch a second position. The two best rucks in the comp have snuck into third, yep. which is great. And then I have the big, bad Carlton Blue making the top four as yeah. well. That's what I'm He's talking about, mate. Oh, Rusty's rubbing <laughs> off on him. But I've also got a bit of weird stipulation where every time I do my top four, the cats always make it. So I've gone with the well, cats. You, you're oh, going to top five. five. Well, it's not a top five. It, it's a top four, but the cats are in it as well. A one, two, three, four, high so five type of it, it is my top four, but the cats always seem to make it, right. so they're in there as well. Well, if, in that case, we should all just book our spot at the London Tavern Hotel for September. Yeah. It looks like all four of us are going to be in the prelims, baby. Flag. Oh, I don't know, jeez. Um, the Blues, the Blues win. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're in business. That's what I'm talking about. Gone, Cats on top. It's hard. I don't want them to win, but they do. And I've gone D's, Lions, and a bit of a smoky. I've gone with Freo. I was, I was scanning through the ladder. I definitely forgot about Richmond and their new players, but I don't want them to win, so I haven't put them in. With the flag, I've gone, same as Rogie with the D's. Yeah. I think Gorn and Grundy, maybe it'll take a few games to sort out, oh. but it'll. The D Dynasty, they'll, they'll get it cracking and they'll be right. We're now predicting the wooden spoon. Now this is what almost gets this YouTube video cancelled uh, through yeah. the years. I tipped the Bombers to finish last, they made top eight. I tipped Collingwood to finish last, they made top eight. So maybe get excited fans, because yeah. they probably made the top eight. Last year I think I said that Gold Coast are going to be banished from the league after they went won another wooden spoon last year and they went okay. They yeah. went alright. I just reckon that Adelaide. Wow! At the bottom, just, they just don't have any what? Even with Jordan Dawson oh. leading the line. <laughs> <laughs> the fearless leader. That would tell me a ball of blood a little bit. Who, who gets wiped the bloke there for one season, one season now he's captain of the next? Yeah, I, I don't... What does he put in? What does he put in? Well, what does he yeah, I don't like the traded player who becomes the captain. Jordan Dawson wouldn't even really know the address yeah. off by yeah. heart yet. So you're not a fan of the traded player coming across being captain? No, it never worked. Chris, Chris Judd, a bit of a mistake. Yeah, Gary Ablett. Yeah, I guess it's a bit of a... Dawson, Judd. 
it was a surprise. I go as far to say, even when Ben McAvoy got named, I was like, he's still a Saints guy in my mind. Yeah. Like, he well, might have won a couple of flags and been a fearless yeah. Hawks leader, but I wasn't a fan of it. Uh, my wooden spoon, and this will ruffle a few feathers. No, here we go. Uh, the the St Kilda football club. <laughs> <laughs> he always gets well, into the Saints. Uh, the Saints, I just reckon, like, the CEO's left again, they've got their administrations all all, uh, all a mess. Ross the boss, though. Ross the boss is there, but they don't really have much else around him. I see them plummeting and probably moving to Tasmania at the end of the year. Jeez, that, what, I think that makes Straight the Straight on the spirit of Tassie. Yeah. Yeah. It just makes so much sense. Uh, so, much, <laughs> ah, so much sense. My wooden spoon, I'm going uh, GWS. Yeah. I just, I'm, the Cadman. Yeah, the Cadman needs some time to improve. He'll carry the side, obviously. Um, and our man Gilby, the, the milkman, Gilby the milkman. around, they're going to win the wooden spoon. Yeah. That core is getting on. I reckon they're all like that Toby Green, Whitfield. Canelio. Oh, they're almost 30s. I've gone the same as Nooney. I went the Crows as well. Just a little bit irrelevant, I think. Maybe that's <laughs> coming from being in Victoria. We probably don't see too many Crows games, or if I do watch one, I don't know that many of the players. <laughs> when you're paying Isaac like Rankin like top dollar, you're in a bit of strife, I reckon. It could almost be one of the best forwards in the comp. Mm. Maybe. No, like them as a whole. Oh, right, Ben. McAdams, Rankin, <laughs> Dex. You're not feeling me. <laughs> All right, let's go into uh, the Coleman medal winner for 2023. Well, had to be changed last second because I didn't realise that uh, one player had injury, but I am now going, I'm not a fan of him, but I think he gets the job done, Tom Lynch from the Tigers. He's very good. He misses a lot, but he still puts yeah. a lot. He, he was on top, like, nearly halfway through the year. Because yeah. I reckon I picked him last year. He's oh, yeah. He kicked goals even when, you know, the other key calls are down. And he gets all the attention. So. He's somehow underrated. Like, yeah. everyone knocks him, yet he still just kicks goals, wins grand finals. He's a genuine megastar. It's my Coleman medal, right? Obviously, two years ago, we saw big Harry Mackay win. Last year, we saw big Charlie Curno win. This year, we're not going to see another Coleman. <laughs> play with the cold medal. We're actually going to see two because it's going to be a tie between <laughs> Harry and Charlie. It's going to tie on about 80, I reckon. Well, if you're making the top four and winning a flag from my prediction, then that would be uh, very handy for those two boys to, to fire up. Absolutely. I, I used to go rogue. I think I went Mitch Lewis and... Mitch Lewis. Like a couple of years ago. But I've played it safe. I've gone Charlie Kerno. He will kick 90 plus goals. He's going to kick 100. He's going to kick 100. Oh, he... Charlie Kerno's kick. Why would I cap him at 90? Go, 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 go. <laughs> Why would I cap him at 90? He's going to kick a ton. Why did Coleman off the back of two ACLs, hadn't played a game in about three years, comes back, wins the Coleman. The world is his oyster and he's going to dine out of the seafood buffet. In under-14s, I used to train with uh, Charlie Kerno as well, so that'll just uh, yeah, hold him in good stead. Also, yeah. yeah. I've gone a little bit rogue after I just called one South Australian team irrelevant. The other one's not that far behind, but <laughs> I, I think they will go a bit better this year, and I think they'll probably sneak into the eight. I've gone Charlie Dixon. Oh, feed uh, if you don't mind. I don't know why, I was just scrolling through the plays and I thought, hey, <laughs> he could be a chance. Oh, right. so I reckon we've seen the best of Charlie Dixon. Yeah. Bit of a, a Dixon renaissance, I wouldn't mind it. I wouldn't mind that either. He does work hard, he does do multiple lead up for me, so I, I like he, He's probably one of the scariest forwards. He would be. Like the be tats, terrifying. the beard, the size. Who do, you reckon, who do you reckon the least scary forward is? Ben Brown. Linguini arms here, boy, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're going to go with the AFL Rising Star. Oh yeah, it's not for me. Uh, I've gone with Elijah Hollands of the Sun. Who? Elijah Hollands, yes, I know everyone. Sorry. Ashcroft, look, you'd probably be smart picking Ashcroft because he looks like a genuine jet, but Elijah Hollands, top, t- uh, top 10 2020 draft pick. He played a couple games last year, showed some glimpses, and I just think maybe he might be able to break through a little bit this year. Got a big body size. Yeah, Elijah I think Will Ashcroft is the best player in this draft crop, but I reckon with Brisbane's elite midfield, might be a bit hard to crack in. He's out on a wing, out on a flank, not his after position. So I'm giving it to Harry Sheasel, who will oh. be on the forward flank at the Kangas. He'll be that crafty forward, maybe a Luke Bruce type, kick a bunch of snags. Can't wait to see. Jeez, that would be amazing. He's a, he's a star in the making. Sheasel's next. Um, I've gone with a number one draft pick from last year's mid-year draft. Oh to the West Coast Eagles, Jai Cully. He's from the Dandenong Stingrays. That's the dreadlocks guy. He's got the dreadies, and he's just... Didn't he absolutely thug someone with an elbow last year? Yeah, so he's got a bit of grit, got a bit of grunt. That's which what we I love. That's which what I love. Yes. 
And I think you can still win it if you miss weeks. It's not like yeah. the brown load. It's not the best and fair. It's just the best young player. So, uh, Jai Cully apparently is tearing it up at the West Coast Eagles preseason. So, he's my pick. We've been waiting a while for the second coming of uh, JC. And I reckon this is his time to shine. Since no one else has, I'll uh, go the Lions man, Ashcroft. I think. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, you have to. Yeah. He's about the only player I know. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be better than Dacoff. Mark Birds. So, we've changed up the All Australian selection this year. Instead of surprise All Australian, and bringing all the controversy, we've gone for all Australian debutants. Maybe we just add these were some of Doss's colleagues' decisions, though. <laughs> we help Doss run the show. Yeah, 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 the producers. I've gone now. I have a genuine me crush. This bloke, he's the only bloke who actually rocked up for Sydney in the grand final against my on my decades. But Chad Warner, mm. he's I, I don't know. It's just amazing. He, he pushes forward. He kicks maybe a couple of goals here and there. He gets about twenty-five. Oh, I reckon going. I reckon he'll be a little trash. My All Australian, I think I said this last year, but I'll say it again. Oh, to be honest, I would have gone Weedering, but I didn't want to be too Carlton. <laughs> so I'm going with uh, the big fella, the former soccer superstar, Sam Draper. I reckon, oh, yeah. I reckon Drapes takes control this year, he kicked the goal of the year, one of the best goals you've ever seen. Does a couple more of those, I reckon you'll see him All Australian ruckman. You went to Gorn. It's about time we, part, we passed the baton on from Gorn and Grundy, <laughs> the number one ruck. So, so yeah, Drapes will take the bench, Grundy in the pocket, Gorn in the race. Oh, like yeah, the three pong to take. <laughs> um, I've gone with uh, a little medium sized forward yep. who's kicked 114 goals in two seasons oh. in Bailey Fritch. Yep. Hasn't been selected yet. 50 goals one year, 50 goals the next. The only person to kick more goals than him in the last two years is Tom Hawkins. So I feel like Bailey Fritch. Gets in the All Australian. You don't have to pass it in the All Australian <laughs> team. The hardest position to pick in the All Australian, the old forward pocket. Do you reckon? Yeah. The second midfielder. Do you reckon the All Australian selectors like take into account the cumulative effect? Like if you put together I, three really yeah, good 50 goal seasons and another one, they'll pick you over maybe someone who's kicking. Yeah, you make a squad, you're more likely to make the squad next year yeah, and the yeah. year after and yeah. the year after. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's two years to make the All Australian like game. Confirmation bias yeah. and rolls on. I've gone a bit rogue. I just went with a team and sort of tried to pick a player from it. I like that. <laughs> Share the love. I think under Ross the boss, Rodgers guys, the Saints, yeah. could be, uh, they need to make something happen or yeah. else, I think he's right, they could be on their way to Tassie. Yeah. So I'm going with big Rowan Marshall. Oh, yeah. Right. I reckon he, this might be pulling this out. He would have been close to a squad one year, yeah. I reckon, when he had a good year. But I reckon, yeah. That, be, oh, that would have been like 2020, uh, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. Marshall will make the squad this year and then probably make the team next year for Tasmania. For <laughs> <laughs> Tassie All-Stars, yeah. they can play against the All-Australian <laughs> team. Um, we haven't done the Brownlee yet. Yeah. Oh, haven't we? Yeah, you skip that. Oh, I do that every year. Um, <laughs> All right, we've been waiting and building it up for the Brownlow medalist. <laughs> the suspense is killing good, everybody. Good suspense. Yeah, you can sense the electricity in the room vibrating through all this. Moments of doubt through mine, purely from you boys. I was confident driving in here today. I am, but I am sticking with uh, Andrew Brayshaw of Freeman Hopkins. Oh, that's, that's a great good. selection. He's hard, seeing that he gets forward, he gets back. He's now the captain, so he might recognise him on their ball. I shouldn't say that because he did finish in the top four or top three last year. Yeah. Yeah. So, any pressure. Yeah, uh, I reckon I'm going to bloke who's won a Brownlow before, the best possession getter in a game. He's been played out of position for the last two, three years. Finally back in his home, in the guts for the biggest club in the land. It's Tom Mitchell at the moment. Wow. I reckon he goes back to his Brownlow best, eating up the leather for fun, dishing it out to the outside runners. T Mitchell, second Brownlow. Uh, I've gone with, uh, yeah. Probably the fittest looking man after this preseason. The pics have gone viral online. Took Miller. I think he is poised for a massive year. He runs forward, he runs back. He's an absolute star. And I reckon he gets 33 votes. 33? Yeah, you get 33. Well, you need you need over 30 to win it. Keep mine short, I went Took as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There we go, it's a good pick. Yeah. The Took Took. Yeah. <laughs> Two Tooks are better than one I've always said. All right, let's go something a little bit different this year. Let's go the next big thing. The next big thing in the AFL. I'm going to be biased here, but I love this kid. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go Max Holmes and Blom. Mm. A lot of chatter that he could be the best player in the comp in a couple oh, of years. Just like last year, <laughs> like, we, we, we stuck with him until the poor, the poor bone got injured, but I just think he's just, he's not big and bulky, but he's smart and he runs and he just he gets him, like, he just yeah, he runs hard. Did you stick with him or was he just playing well so he kept getting in the game? Well, it's definitely that. Well, I've gone a little bit rogue with my next big thing. I haven't actually gone a player. 
I've gone a trend. <laughs> My next big thing in the AFL, and it's a copy copycat <laughs> competition, we know that, but how Geelong operated with their two big yeah. racks, and Melbourne now operating with their two big racks, and I think the way they do it, where one's a forward half rack, one's a back half rack, I think you'll see the Twin Towers start to dominate leagues everywhere. Everyone will be playing the two ruck, but I remember it wasn't long ago where you never played two rucks. It was only one ruck with like a sort of third tall forward doing the job. Pinch hitting Can this I, year. It, was, it, it wasn't long ago where ruckmen were almost obsolete. Can yeah. I, they were on the way yeah. out. Yeah. Who's our two big ruckmen? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. No, what, no, what uh, Stanley, Stanley and Blitz. 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 So, Blitz uh, yeah, two, 200 yeah. centimetre. Yeah, but they're not. Like, they're not traditional ruckmen. Yeah, but yeah. one was doing forward, Stanley one was doing back up. <laughs> so, Stanley was a defender for the Saints back up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Twin Towers, I like it. Um, I've got a player. And I don't really know how to say his last name, but he just looks like he could be anything. Fremantle Dockers, they've needed a key forward for a long time, and I'm big on Jai Amos. Oh. I think he is an absolute superstar, and he'll kick 45 goals this year. Yeah. <laughs> He's got lots of single <laughs> I went with another line. He played a few games at the back end of the year, including one or all of the finals, Darcy Wilmot. Oh, oh I like he that. Off the halfback, which we've been sort of... Uh, crying out for over the last few years. I reckon he plays. He, he plays look, all year. He, 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 he was going for that rising star, but I'm like, oh, they're not going to give him to like a, a little gritty backman. Yeah. He's great on content as well. Like, he's an absolute, Does he? He's an absolute pisser. I think he's a little well, bit of us. Mitch <laughs> Robinson sort of style. Yeah. I like <laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> and we're going to wrap it up with a headline you'll see throughout 2023. I'm taking two. I'm going to two of you. Oh, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll cut out one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dylan didn't get his one last year, so he needs to make <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Crucial. Um, the, the first big one, Suns play finals. Yeah. I'm very confident on that. I reckon they finally have a bit of a healthy year. They can say a bit of a park being king back. Um, let's see. And the second one is Hutchwood. I reckon um, the Big B, the All Stars, have a match this year based around raising funds for maybe. There's a flood or a, or a fire. <laughs> so, well, you're hoping there's yeah. some sort of natural disaster. Well, you remember a couple of years ago they they did. Yeah, they, 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 yeah. And I just, I know, you know, the, the disaster was bad, but how good was the game? <laughs> Boy, we'll, we'll get it back on. Just to be clear, I'm not the, 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 the big B and the All Stars just to play normal, like without any sort of repercussions yeah. at all, or, or, or consequences to a beautiful country. We get. I just think, uh, yeah, yeah, it'll happen yeah. this year. <laughs> <laughs> but you wonder, like, is that something the players really? want. I know like the Players Association are always going on about, I oh, would play too many games or like they train too much. Yeah. Is that just going to be another thing yeah. that doesn't? Or could it go NBA All-Star mode where it's almost no, like I reckon hands-free? It, yeah, I reckon it's going to mean something. Like, I reckon yeah. it's going to be like state, like I'd rather NRL State of Origin than NBA All-Stars where it's just like almost yeah. touching. That's just like years and years of like build-up and yeah. history where as you go, you, if when you play rugby league, you know you're going to play in that whereas now coming out. They could so, do yeah. it like they don't have to do it every year. They could do it a bit like the World Cup, where it's once in every four years. So yeah. it's not yeah. like, you know, taking that much of a toll on you, but we know we've got State of Origin coming up. Or even so special. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. under 25s or something like that. Something yeah. different. Because yeah. it's like they play, they all play under 18s, so they play for the state. Yeah. Uh, my headline you'll see is Bevo Boza big time. I reckon he's going to get himself sacked for a misdemeanor. <laughs> Don't know whether he's blowing up at the press, at a fan, uh, at a player, but I reckon he's going to just finally it all gets to his head <laughs> and he goes back. He's under a lot of pressure this season. Yeah, and the pressure cookies about to explode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bevo. I'm going to say that Brad gets bragging rights over brother Chris. I think the 6-0 and o Cats take on the 0-6 Bombers, yep. and I think the Bombers win in an upset. I like it. I don't know exactly how I'm going to word this, but it's a bit topical at the minute. Cats early struggles lead to pitch doctoring accusations. <laughs> India style. I reckon the Cats might start off a bit and something might happen down at GMHBA Stadium where they might make it thinner. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they'll turn up one day and go, wow, this isn't the same ground we normally play on. <laughs> so let me get, let me <laughs> We're altering our ground swords yeah. to do that game. Oh, oh, something, no, no. Yeah, something about there's going to be mud somewhere, maybe on the left hand side where teams <laughs> normally like to go. Yeah, when Buddy's are. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, he switched over. <laughs> He's got back on the top. Yeah. <laughs>
Oh, well, I think that's it for another season predictions for 2023. Uh, we really appreciate everyone for tuning in. If you want, slap down your predictions in the comments down below. Let us know what we got right. Let us know what we got wrong. And uh, yeah, we appreciate the support and we'll see you soon for some more content. Cheers. Go Blues.